side, our blue team, Zuna on Butcher, Soldier on Muradin, Arthalon on Jaina, Kale on Raynor, and Dredna on Uther. Make some noise for Tempo Storm. And their opponents in red on the right, Dunk Train on Rhaegar, King Caffeine on Leoric, Fan on Abathur once again, K1 Pro on Tyrande, and I Dream on Arthas. Make some noise for Cloud9! Well, right away we're seeing our players uh, going into the center of the map. It looks like the Watchtower is going to go to Tempo Storm for starts. Yeah. And, uh, you know, no one, no one dying for that Watchtower. I want you all to pay attention to that. I know <laughs> I've played with some of you before on this map and you've gone for it. But, uh... I'm so lucky with some of these people. <laughs> So, uh, we're seeing the heroes now all split up to the respective lanes and begin to soak up uh, some experience here. Uh, obviously, we want to be very careful and hyper-vigilant for when the two towers do spawn that's up right. here, as that's when we're going to see some more force skirmishes. Yeah, do we see heroes remain in any of these lanes? You want to soak as much as possible while still getting uh, your towers. So. It'll be interesting to see how they want to do that. Sometimes we do see teams try to attack and take on the other. Oh, and oh. speaking of which, coming in there, but it's, it's what I like to see there from Tyrande. He's doing a good job, doing a yeah. good job with that stun there. And really preventing the Butcher from being fully utilized. That's right. The stuns are the Butcher's worst enemy. He needs to be unstunned so he can just continue his attack, heal himself up, and deal that massive critical damage. And so in five seconds, the Temples will be activated. Usually we see this as a temple trade, if you will, where one uh, team is just controlling one temple, the other team just goes to the other. Uh, it's really when the second phase of this, the second um, uh, activation period comes, when it's actually just the bottom lane that we see more of an all-on-all -all, uh, brawl. Well, right now we do see that Temple Storm having that top shrine and the middle shrine for the time being. Uh, Cloud9 kind of getting outplayed for the moment. Yeah, and as you can see here, uh, there's actually going to be an engagement now in the center shrine area as Leoric is coming in now. And they're actually able to zone them off of that uh, temple for the time being. Nice capture there. Yes, indeed. Uh, Cloud9 definitely does want to get some of these shots. You don't want to give up both the temples. You're going to lose too much experience there. But for the time being, still very, very even. And we see now Leoric going to go ahead and ghost away for the time being. Uh, Rainer now pushing in here, doing a decent amount of damage, and it's going to be a reclaim there. Um, also, Top Shrine has been depleted as well. So now we're going to see, again, them rotate back to their respective lanes, continue to soak up that important experience. That's right. Now, the next thing that we're going to really be watching for is when are these mercenary camps taken? You want to have some mercenaries pushing on the map right. around the time that the second temple is activated. Well, we, so. saw, we saw that earlier as well, is, is actually capturing the top bruiser camp. Well, I should say killing off the bruisers there, but not captured until you see the bottom shrine activated, so you can have that whole lane get pushed up if there is a fight at the bottom part of the map. Yeah, you can really spread your opponents thin by having your, your bruiser camp attacking at the right time. But we'll see when these two teams want to take those bruiser camps and those siege camps as well that'll go to that bottom lane where the next temple will be coming up. And it looks like those bruiser camps are now going to be taken here with the Butcher and Jaina coming up. All right, this is a little bit early, but again, this could be one of those situations where they just don't cap it for a while. And let's see what exactly they got in store for us here. They take that and they're just going to go and capture it immediately. So Tempo Storm now having a push that has to be responded to there by Cloud9. So Cloud9 should have time to respond to this, but Tempo Storm looks like they have some plans here, pushing over across the map. Oh, and are they going for their opponent's bruiser camp? Uh, that would be pretty gutsy if they did try to do that. They're certainly uh, interested in at least being close to that area for the time being. They may even want to check and just make sure that their opponents aren't taking the Bruiser camp of their own, since that would just mean the Bruisers would just collide into each other, right? They would eventually become completely neutralized. Certainly. Well, right now, Cloud9 going to go ahead and clean up this Bruiser camp. Right about now is when they need to take out their Bruiser camp if they hope to get it before that bottom temple comes up, but they haven't started it yet. And now it's 10 seconds away from the bottom temple being activated. You can see right now, frantically, Art is going to try to just get this lane started over here with these bruisers that they're going to try to capture their own. Meanwhile, down here at the bottom, uh, Tempo Storm is actually in pretty good position. It looks like they should be able to just shove their way down to the <laughs> temple without really being contested. Yeah, they'll definitely be able to take this temple, at least for the first portion of it. But that top bruiser camp is up for Cloud9, so that'll be pushing against Tempo Storm and could pull them out of position a little bit later on the temple's life duration. 
So nicely done there by Tempo Storm. Already with a, just a little bit of an experience lead, but this can really add up. Don't forget, level 10 is not really that far away, um, nor is the next uh, Temple being activated since we're almost done with this Temple capture. Well, look at that. The fort going down. These two Siege Giants adding a lot of damage in as well. Getting a lot of value out of this bottom Temple right now is Temple Storm. But we do have a nice push by Cloud9, both in the middle and especially in the top lane. And that's one thing you can do if they're all fighting over that Temple, or at least trying to keep that protected down there's a bot. You definitely have the opportunity to do a push on the opposite end of the map. Right now, the Butcher, Suna going down. Beautiful play there by Cloud9. Cloud9 continuing to push forward right now. The top fort is very, very bruised. Meanwhile, Arthas trying to get away as Jaina does a great job with her Blizzard. Well, right now we do have yet another hero coming up. Dreadnought on that support. Uther coming up to try to help out as well. And Tyrone does go down despite the Abathur hat. They will have to back up and they did not get that fort. Also important to note is just how far bottom lane has actually been pushed in here uh, by Murray. We see that all the way to the front door of where the Keeps are at. Uh, he's actually managed to uh -oh. shove in there. Did he go too far though? It just did. Taddy throws up his avatar trying to get out of here right now. And it looks like Arthas will turn around that heroic level 10 just in the nick oh, of time man. and this is really this is pretty sneaky right when they're at level 10 and of course uh, cloud nine has to be on the defensive they're gonna go for the boss if they go for the boss the bottom lane is already so badly pushed back they could easily get in there and start damaging the keep and that would give them a very easy uh, pathway to getting to the core very early on in this game well it looks like they do get that boss it is gonna be pushing that bottom lane and they are rotating towards the top right now so a beautiful move by Tempest Storm utilizing that really quick level 10. Now up here at the top uh, excuse me no they're actually yeah I guess they just will go into the mid I don't know <laughs> I think we are cast to basically go back yeah. right now since um, there's really no way they can defend everything without having everybody there and already another keep is destroyed another rotation top to the uh, to the top of the screen is going to make this very very easy for tempo storm to destroy well tempo storm is going to take out this fort as well maybe it looks like but the shrine is coming up up at the top so backing up and taking this temple will do the same thing it will take right. out that fort and so they're backing up now by the way, Tyrande doing a fantastic job with the Yowl, just checking everywhere to try to, uh, you know, see where they, they can telegraph any of the movements here. Well, it looks like we are taking a lot of damage. Wraith walking out of there, surviving, but... Oh, oh the Butcher's oh. coming for him! Looks like we have a beautiful ancestral, then an amazing walk right there, but still, Cappy does go down. Dream in the meantime, taking lots of damage, goes down as well. A wonderful fight right now for Tempo Storm. Tempo Storm has swung the, uh, the tide in their favor there. Now, will they go right on top of the fort? Or no, they're actually just going to stay back here and just capture this temple because that will destroy the fort just as easily. This may, in fact, even bait Cloud9 into coming further in here, in which case, I think Tempo Storm would jump on him and crush him. Well, it looks like right now the Butcher going in once again. Rhaegar falls. Well, we do, you know, it's still not the, the biggest death timer, so they are coming out pretty quickly, but Tempo Storm is just pushing them back and back and back. I mean, it's, it's pretty wild, right? I mean, it's level 12 to level 11, but at the same time, we're so, we have so much that's been destroyed here for Cloud9. Uh, Temple Storm hasn't gone unscathed, of course, yeah. but really the amount of damage that's been dealt out here at this pace with already a boss being captured is really impressive. Yeah, it, it truly is. They're up a talent here at the moment. They've got really complete map control, continuing to take their mercenaries and just rotating fantastically onto these temples, getting that extra damage. And look at this. Now they're attacking that bottom keep. And this, <laughs> while doing that, they're just going to take every mercenary camp in sight while guarding that bottom area. And remember, guys, this is not a map where you have to actually physically show up to kill the core. You can just keep capturing these temples. And there's not, I mean, obviously nothing that they can do. If you just have the temples, the core does get damaged. Eventually the core takes too much damage and goes down in that game. So this is really, really tough right now for Cloud9. They really need to pull a rabbit out of their hat. Indeed they do. You know, the mule is doing a good job kind of negating some of these shots. Uh, a very good talent take right there for Apther, but is it going to be enough? Tempo Storm is really running the entire map. We do have a big push in the top lane by Cloud9, but in the meantime, we are having that keep take a lot of damage at the bottom. And remember, the bottom lane is the same lane that the boss could push through again later, and we should have the boss 
uh, you know, respawning here shortly. So coming through here is going to be very scary right now for Cloud9. As we see another engagement coming in here now. Cloud9 has to defend. And it looks like the Divine Star the Shield really helped out the Butcher there. Dealt a lot of damage. But in the meantime, we do have Lior pushing forward. A beautiful swing there. Now Dream pushing them out. A nice warp toss there by Soldier. Getting out of the way. Hale, uh-oh. Oh, missing Rain. a shot. <laughs> Yeah, Kale has to get back there. Uh, he's taking some more damage. Uh, looks like Artemis is still on the hunt right now. We see Sprint being used. Oh. Beautiful there by Tyrande. Three heroes down currently. And this is exactly what Cloud9 needed to do to come back. Remember, the later we are in the game, the longer it takes them to respawn. So they're <laughs> able to come in there and still do a lot of damage. However, Jada somehow ninja her way back over there and managed to still take out that very critical key. Well, it looks like she may not live to tell the tale, but probably worth it to get that keep down and really yeah, get sure. the pressure on that bottom no, lane. A, a, bit, a very worthwhile sacrifice mm -hmm. there. And that's not always an easy decision either, right? Yeah. It, I mean, it's not always about make sure no heroes die. Sometimes it's about just make sure that we have an advantage here. Yeah. So and, and you that can't was leave smart. you can't leave a very damaged keep up because the right. mule will bring it back to full health immediately. So, so. That, that was a really cool and necessary sacrifice that, that they did back there. Uh, now. Because Cloud9 is now the aggressor over here in the center, they will now get the fort area over here uh, in the, uh, yeah, in the center, excuse me, for Temple Storm. Temple Storm, their response right now is to try to just get as, oh, no, they're going to they're gonna back off. They were going to get that Bruiser camp, but it looks like they were worried about a possible ambush, realizing that they weren't chased through the bush. They decided to then finish the job. Yeah, that was actually a really smart call to try to back up for a moment. They lost track of Cloud9. They knew they were near, so... You know, they, they played it a little bit safe, but they do have that top bruiser camp able to push out that top lane, and now it might be time to go down and battle for the bottom temple. As we go forward here, Leoric is in a little bit of trouble. Shriek Ray being used on him, and Leoric is gone within a matter of seconds. Really nice movie. It already used up that very incredible Wraith Walk skill, so unable to get away right there. Now we do have Zuna down here, capturing this bottom temple for Temple Storm. And with so little structures remaining, every temple victory is getting closer and closer to the end here for Cloud9. I mean, a few more temple captures, and that's the nail in the coffin. Uh, now we do see Artemis over here in the front. They are being driven back, zoned out there uh, by the great Hyperion by Raynor. Looks like Zuna taking a lot of damage here on Boom. Oh, they're all an absolutely amazing Divine Shield does go down. Take out Leoric now. And it looks like we do have Vernon jumping in, dealing a lot of damage here to Dream. Dump Train trying to keep his teammates alive, but to no avail. And a push from this is going to be, I think, potentially close to a game ender, man. I mean, they're doing so much damage to them right now. Getting the boss is the perfect move because that's going to allow them to really get in there and squash their opponents. Do they follow the boss? Do they go for the temples? It's, it's tough to say. But no matter what, getting the boss here is beautiful. The entire bottom lane is completely open, which means that boss has direct access to the core. Well, it looks like right now they are going ahead and getting Getting that siege camp as well. We do have Dunk Train kind of going down towards that bottom lane. Going to have to clean out what he can. This is looking worse and worse for Cloud9 at the moment with that boss marching down that bottom lane. <laughs> and if the, if the bottom lane already being so scary, taking the two, uh, all the siege giant camps down at the bottom means that there's just so much that they have to stop. I mean, this huge flow just headed towards the core. Meanwhile, taking the temples, why not? There's really yeah. nothing the opposing team can do really to yeah. contest. They're even hitting this other keep because they have to kill the boss and they have to save the keep. There's just too much that Cloud9 needs to defend against. Tempo Storm playing like their lives are on the line right now. Tempo Storm playing just at, at, like the perfect games right now. They know when to engage. They know when to be greedy even. Uh, for instance, when we saw that first boss capture, they know exactly where to be on the map. And there just doesn't seem to be very much that Cloud9 can do about it. Well, right now, uh, it does look like they lose their second keep. Giants marching down that bottom lane as well. They've got to watch out for that. Chasing right now on Tempo Storm, but the longer they chase, the more damage these Sea Giants oh. will do to the core. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the core getting lower and lower now, down to about 80% HP before uh, it just barely uh, Cloud9 gets in there and cleans up this mess. The response from Tempo Storm to continue to go around, control the rest of the map. They're getting the watchtowers. They're making sure their lanes are as pushed out as possible. And I guess it's pretty straightforward, Artosis. All they really need to do is wait for the next temples to spawn. 
and capture that and can keep chipping away. And let's not forget, they're a level up right now. It's 19 against 18, and if Tempo Storm gets level 20, they get those Storm talents, that is going to mean disaster for Cloud9. It will be so tough to do anything when they have such a strong talent. Now Cloud9 trying to come up here. Nice escape there by Verdon. Jaina's going to have to be careful. She can't be that far out. Jaina now backing up and mounting up as we see a very careful rotating coming here from Tempo Storm. They basically have this. They just can't lose a team fight. And oh. here's where we might have a forced team fight, speaking of which. There's 25 seconds now before Temples activate. They'll probably go up to the bushes up here. Um, or maybe try to set up some kind of an ambush. In fact, no, they're just going to rotate up here to the top. And the mercenary camp going to be captured down there. Uh, well, I guess I could say up there uh, in that top lane there for Cloud9. Well, right now we do see Tempo Storm trying to pop onto maybe both of the Temples of Sark, get some of those free shots early on, but it looks like Cloud9 kind of coming in, making a little circle around them. They know that they've got to fight here. They can't lose that last keep. They're almost done already. And as Cloud9 pushes forward, keep in mind it's now level 19 to level 19. So as far, even though you know Cloud9's been taking a beating this game in, in a fair fight, Cloud9 can still absolutely win this. Well, it looks like Cloud9 pushing off Tempo Storm for the time being, but Tempo Storm has the freedom to rotate. They don't really have to fight for these. They have enough buildings left that these lasers don't scare them. So they're going down to this bottom temple. A beautiful move, just trying to get extra damage off on their opponents. And Cloud9's aware that they really can't allow any temple to be captured. It's a game of cat and mouse right now. Uh, Cloud9 still. It looks like, no, they're going to regroup, in fact. I thought they were going to come down, but they actually just changed their minds. They go back up to the top temple, decide to get uh, guaranteed damage off on the opposing player's uh, base there. Well, you know, Cloud9, uh, <laughs> sure, they have a few things starting to go on for them. They have Abathur down the bottom. They're killing this top temple right now. Oh, this, this is... Top keep, that's a great move with yeah. the, the bruisers. That, but... That's a really great move. I yeah. love that. But immediately, Tempo Storm, they're going for the jugular. They're going right towards the Nexus. Abathur, they're trying to defend. As you can see, the Nexus is getting lower. Cloud9 trying to...